Isaiah 30, verse 8. God speaks to Isaiah and he says, Now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, Speak unto us smooth things, And prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. He shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a sure to take fire from the hearth or take water with all out of the pit. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall your strength shall be your strength and you would not. But you said, No, we will flee upon horses, therefore shall you flee. And we will ride upon the swift, therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke at one, at the rebuke of five shall you flee till you be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain as an ensign on a hill. Therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will be exalted. That he may have mercy upon you for the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. When trouble and affliction and, and distress comes in your life, regardless of what form that is, whether that it is your car won't start or there's difficulties in your finances or whichever way may be a report from the doctor's office, whatever that it may be, when difficulties come into your life, do you seek God with all of your heart, with everything in you before you seek anything else, any other person or any other source? What's the first reaction in your life when trouble strikes? Well, it figures that's just the way it is for me. <coughs> that's the way my luck runs. Now, about every one of you in here has probably said that at one time. Are you scared? Do you panic when trouble comes all of a sudden? When you're in the middle of a winter storm and your electricity goes out, you're like, oh, no. Do you immediately begin to feel discouraged? come in on your life. Well, in this uh, chapter that we read today, I want to talk to you about Isaiah's prophecy to Israel. And when I say Israel, I'm talking about Judah. Judah was, uh, Isaiah was sent to prophesy to the, to the nation of Judah. Now, Israel had been divided to the northern and southern kingdom, and, and there were other prophets that was prophesying to Israel in the northern kingdom. But Jeremiah's uh, uh, from God was sent to Judah to prophesy to them. But when I say Israel, they were Israelites, so I'm talking about Israel or God's people. But in the chapter before, in chapter 29, in verse number 15, uh, Isaiah says, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and they do their works in the dark, and they say, Who sees us and who knows us? 
You see, the Jewish leaders had planned an alliance with Egypt and thought that if they gave them enough money and traded them enough horses and gave them enough military things, that they thought that Egypt could help them. Now remember, Isaiah is prophesying to them the, the captivity of the Assyrians and the invasion of the Assyrians that are to come upon them. So Isaiah says, woe unto them that thinks they're doing these things in the dark. But God says, I see everything that they're doing. And the Israel, the Jewish leaders was making these plans secretly, but now God is openly declaring and rebuking them. The rulers are warned that no good is going to come out of their alliance with Egypt, not even in a worldly sense, because the Egyptians can give them no aid, no effectual help, and everything they spend to try to get the friendship of Egypt to help them to fight against the Assyrians is going to be a waste of time and money and effort. So God gives a woe. Somebody say woe. Whoa. Like, woe, you. God gives a woe through the prophet Isaiah to his people Israel. And he pronounces that woe in verse number 1 of chapter 30. He says, woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord. Now the word in Hebrew for rebellious here means stubbornness backsliding, turning away. It is the picture, if you've ever seen um, the little rascals, uh, they uh, take this old mule and put a rope around him and try to pull him, and that old mule just sits down, and they pull, and that old mule just backs up. That's what God's saying is his people is like sometimes. They're like an old mule. They're stubborn. They're backing up, and they won't hear the word of the Lord. So what is God's people? What is this that they're turning away from, and what is it that's caused their backsliding? You find the answer if you continue reading in verse number 1. He said, they take counsel, but not of me. They devise plans, but not of my spirit. Basically meaning that they make their own plans rather than leaning on me and calling upon me for their direction and for guidance in their life. They lean to the arm of the flesh. And he says every time that they go their own way and they forget to seek me and they turn to the world, he said they pile sin upon sin. You'll never get anywhere running from God. We've got to turn to God for direction in our life today. Because basically why is it that he says, look at verse number 1 there. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, that cover with a covering but not of me, that they may add sin to sin. What does he mean they sin to sin? God is saying that you've given up on trusting me. And every time you go against trusting me, you're piling up sin upon sin. When you should have turned to me, but you turned to the world, it's a sin. When you should have called upon me, but you're calling upon your friends, it's a sin. And God said you're going the wrong direction and you're piling sin upon sin. Because you give up on my ability and my power to save you. Now God's people like ourselves know very well that we ought to trust the Lord in every circumstance, every situation, no matter how large or small or insignificant that it is. They, as well as you and I, we are reminded constantly in the Psalms. Psalm 36, 37, How precious is your loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust in the shadow of your wings. Chapter 57, verse 1, For my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge. Chapter 63, verse 7, Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. God is wanting his people to turn and to trust him. So Isaiah declares to Israel that God would break down all of their self-protective walls. You see, you can, uh, you can buy a tornado shelter. You can buy a brick home. You can put your house half underground. You can do all you can to protect yourself. But in this situation, when the hand of God is against you, there's nothing you can build. There's nowhere that you can go to get away from the hand of God. He's saying that I'll break down all those self-protective walls. Look at verses 13 and 14. This iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. God is going to break the, his people suddenly because of their sin. And he shall break it as the breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare. Now notice what he says there. I want to point out right quick, not in my notes, but I remember in verse number 14. 
He shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a sure to take the fire from the earth or to take water with all out of the pit. When an earthen vessel, he was talking about a, an earthen vessel. You remember these old, old uh, um, ceramic brown pots that you may all used to have flowers in sitting on the porch? And you would break them. If you break them, there would be a piece of it that, that would cup. You could, you could scoop coals out of the fire. You could put a little water in it. But God says, I'm going to break it so much that you won't even have a piece big enough to pick up water in it. you see what he's saying? God's judgment is severe and God's judgment is righteous and God's judgment is good and he's telling his people these things, everything that you've trusted in, everything that you put your confidence in, that is not me, it's going to collapse and it's going to fall. Folks, that's the time in which we're living in today. We put our trust in the government. We put our trust in the medical side. We put our trust in the church. We put our trust in the sports. But God Said I'm gonna bring it all down. I'm gonna shake it until you know that I'm the one that needs to be trusted today. And now, even in his judgment, we see God's compassion. Isaiah reveals God's compassion and desire for his people. God don't wish to punish us. He urges Judah. Isaiah says, You don't have to live in this confusion. You don't have to endure this sudden breaking because God has provided a way out for us. Notice verse 15. Thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved. Hallelujah to God. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. That's the secret to your spiritual strength today. The quietness and the peace of God and your confidence in Him. Amen. That's what's kept you here through all this. That's why when the rest of the world and other churches are running to and fro, not knowing what to do, confused and afraid of knowing how to act and what you do, you put your confidence in God. You served God in quietness. You served Him in peace. And God has kept His hands upon us today. The word for quietness in Hebrew here means repose, calm, relaxing, free from all anxiety. And I like this one, lying down with support underneath. Hallelujah to God. I tell you what, I want to act like a wild mountain hillbilly this morning. I, I, I bottled it up and held it up, but I'm going to try to act right because we're on video. But I tell you what, it is so good to know when I lay down at night, regardless of how my flesh feels and regardless of what's going on in my life and in my world around me, it's good to know when I lay down, I know they support under me that God has got his hand upon me today. And I'm going to wake up in the morning because God will sustain me through the night. Hallelujah to God. We serve a great God today, church. So let me ask you, do you have this quietness and this confidence when trouble comes your way? When you get a phone call or something happens? Many Christians don't have that quietness and confidence today. So many people, especially even in the church, live in such a frenzy of activity, running to and fro, rushing over everything, even in ministry, even churches and ministers running and rushing so much, but at the same time they're afraid, full of fear and full of worry. Everybody wants guidance. Everybody wants directions. Everybody wants a solution. Everybody wants something to calm their nerves. Everybody wants something to calm their spirit. But they're looking everywhere else except to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on, brother. Amen. I said they're looking everywhere else Amen. except to God. Amen. Hallelujah to God today. But I tell you, God wants us to have the secret to our spiritual peace. He wants us to know the secret to our spiritual power and Come our on. spiritual strength. I, and that's having peace with God. I, a quiet spirit and resting in the presence of God. I, hallelujah to God. The psalmist said, I, although the seas roar, I, he said, I put my confidence in the Lord. I'm telling you folks today, the world is rocking to and fro like a grown man. But God will keep them at peace. Who has their mind stayed upon him? Amen. Think about this. If we were truly living and walking in righteousness, our lives would bear the fruit of a calm spirit and quietness of heart and peace with God. 
Brother Mark preached that outstanding sermon, Faith to Faith. Dynamic job. If you if you weren't able to be here, if you've not watched it, you need to go pull it up on YouTube and watch it. Out of Romans chapter 1, he quoted this verse. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. God's righteousness. Hallelujah to God. We need it in our life. And Isaiah describes the righteousness of God and what it is to accomplish in our life. Verse 17. The work of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Hallelujah to God. The work of righteousness will be peace. I don't have to go around trying to tell everybody I'm a Pentecostal preacher. I don't have to go around telling everybody I go to a Pentecostal church. I don't have to go around trying to tell people I'm the best Christian that there is with a halo on my head. If I'm walking in the righteousness of God, there's a peace in my soul that the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away today. Peter talks about in 1 Peter 3 and 4 the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. Now the spirit that Peter's talking about here don't have anything to do with temperance or personality. We think of a quiet and gentle spirit as somebody that's backward and shy. That's not at all what this means. The spirit here that Peter is talking about because some people are naturally shy. They're not good people. They're just shy and backwards. But they're some of the meanest people I've ever met. And then you got some people that's just loud and robust and, and boisterous. And uh, they, they come across as rude, but they might be good people. So they got nothing to do with personality. And he's got, don't have anything to do with, with temperament. But what Peter is referring to here comes only through and by the Spirit of God. Yeah. And only God can give you that spirit in the midst of turmoil and in the midst of pain. When you're standing at a casket of a loved one, maybe even a child or even a spouse, only God can give you that meekness and that temperance and that quiet spirit that you can have the peace of God that passes all understanding. You see, Isaiah was seeing Israel flee to Egypt for help, trusting in horses, trusting in chariots, trusting in the government. He saw all of their leaders. But God speaks to him in verse number three and he says, now the Egyptians are men and not God. That ought to be something of importance to us today when we're looking for help, when we're looking for peace, when we're looking for an answer. We need to realize that the Egyptian or any of the things of the world are just men, but they are not God. Amen. He said their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, both he that helps will fall, talking about the Egyptians, and he that is being helped, which is Israel, will also fall down. They will all perish together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to God. Mm -hmm. So Israel was stressing. Their ambassadors are coming and going. The, the leaders are holding these private meetings trying to come up with some kind of concoction of allegiance with the Egyptians. Everybody's in a panic wondering what to do. The Assyrians are coming. What are we going to do? We need some help. But Isaiah speaks a word of assurance and he tells them, you don't have to be stressing like this. It don't have to be this way. Look what he tells them. Return from your backsliding. Repent of your rebellion against God and trusting everything else. Turn to the Lord and he'll cover you with peace and give you quietness and rest in the middle of everything that's going on. You know that God through his spirit gives us strength when we put all of our needs and our cares into his hand and trust him that he has the power and the ability to help us today. So what about you? What about your home? What about your family? We left here today and we all went home with you and walked through your doors. What is your home like? Is it calm? Is it a peaceful place? Or is it a place of doubt and worry and question, anxiety and restlessness? When trouble comes, do you earnestly seek God first or you get on the phone and start asking help and looking for help everywhere else? But then when God does speak to you, do you obey His voice in everything that He tells you to do? 
You see, God wants us to be still. He wants us to be restful. He wants us to be trusting Him for the outcome. And He tells us that will be your strength, your quietness and your confidence. Quietness, your peace with God, and your confidence in God is your strength. So much more that I want to say in this this morning. But I want to stay on track. <clears throat> Every one of us face things in our life. And when things come, sometimes they come all of a sudden. You don't have time to prepare. Amen. Or you didn't think to prepare when you had the time. Maybe it was a fleeting thought that crossed your mind. Maybe God tried to speak to you to prepare for this. And, and you went along like me, just like an old dog running through the field. Ooh. And you didn't pay no attention to God. You just thought it was a fleeing thought. But then you come to find out, boy, that must have been the Lord. If I had done what he said, I'd been better today. But Isaiah said in, verse, in chapter 30, verses 18, 19, and then 21 and 29, he said, Blessed are all those that wait for him. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. Ain't it good to know? Brother Art, when I cry to God, I know he hears me. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. That's where we want to turn God off. See, we want to call and we want to cry out to God. God, I need this bill paid. God, I need this fixed. God, I need this help. God, I need that. I need this. I need this. But God said, if you'll return from your backsliding and your rebellion, he said, then you'll hear a voice from, and that will tell you, here's the way, walk in it. We, we don't want to hear that part. We want to live our life, and when we do that, we just pile sin upon sin, and we keep on going. It might be good today, might be good for a few weeks, might even be good for a few years, but somewhere he said that that thing's going to break. It's going to burst, and when he does, this thing will be no pieces to fix. God said, I'm telling you today to return to me. Do you know that the Syrians attacked his, uh, uh, Judah and came upon them? The Babylonians took them into captivity for over for 70 years. But you know the people that heard this word, notice what God told Isaiah. He said, write it down in a book. Write it down in a book because there's going to be a day somebody's going to look back on this and I want it to be a witness to them of what the power of God is able to do. Yes, they may have been those that rebelled against God and sinned against God and didn't turn out their way, but the judgment came upon the whole nation. But I believe those that kept God's word and those that returned and those that repented, I believe even down in Babylon, God gave them peace. He gave them quietness in their spirit. And one day, 70 years later, they was able to come back to Jerusalem they is able to come back home. I'm telling you, church, one of these days a trumpet of God is going to sound and those that have kept the faith we're going to be going home one of these days. Amen. What Isaiah is saying, if you just wait on the Lord, if you'll cry out to him again and turn back to trust in him again, he'll do everything I've said and even more. Folks, God can just speak a word and destroy our enemy. Yeah. That's all he has to do. Just speak a word. Matter of fact, verse 31 says, For through the voice of the Lord, Assyria will be beaten down. It wasn't going to be through the, through the power of, of Judah. It wasn't going to be through the power of the kings. It wasn't going to be uh, through the power of the prophets or the leaders. But he said, through the voice of the Lord. Well, his voice Makes the difference. Yes. Through the voice of the Lord, the Assyria will be beaten down as he strikes with a rod. There's no situation that God, your Father, and, and your God is not able to solve. No battle he can't win for us by simply speaking the word. And then verse 33, Isaiah said, The breath of the Lord is going to consume everything in our way. So now what was coming to Israel was due to them because of their sin and their rebellion against God. And maybe we'll discuss that one day in a, in a sermon. I got to digging in this and, and so there may be more to come out of Isaiah. But God wants us to learn from their, their experiences. That's why God had Isaiah write it in a book. Because they're going through it. They're going to have to learn through what they're going through. But you and I can read what they went through and learn ahead of time so that we don't have to go through what they went through. God wants us to learn from that. Even dealing with their sin, God is merciful and gave them a promise. So Jesus said, it is the Father's good pleasure to give good things to his children. Yeah. Amen. 
just as a parent would rather their children obey them than to have to discipline them, God wants us to trust him with everything. Amen. Every situation, every matter, everything that comes to us, he wants us to live in quiet and peaceful trust in him with confidence. He wants to give us rest. I'm not talking about rest because you feel like you've worked hard all day and we need bodily rest, but I'm talking about a rest in your spirit. A rest in your spirit. We talk about stress. That's where a lot of stress comes from. If our spirit is at peace and calm with God, it'll eliminate most of the, that stress in our life because God gives us that peace in the midst of it. Of course, if you can't find that peace and that rest, if you're not of God, you'll never find it. Yeah. So if you're here today or you're watching by YouTube or Facebook and you don't know the Lord, you'll never have that peace until you find the Lord Amen. because only the Lord can give that. But if you are the Lord's, and you've allowed stress and worry and fear to steal and rob your peace and quietness, bring it to Him today. Because just as He promised, you'll hear His word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Folks, let's put our trust in the Lord today. Let's put our confidence in the Lord today. Things are going to get a little bit worse, but I'm going to put my confidence in the Lord because I'm going to trust Him above all things today. Will you stand with us all over the house?